All right, so what did we do? What did we do now? <laughs> um, so I'll explain a little bit about my understanding of of energy work from the perspective of meridians and also uh, uh, my understanding and my experience based on my experiences of uh, healing of trauma so <clears throat> um, I'm working on this longer article on uh, light body also known as rainbow body or also known as immortality in Taoism which is you know it's a long article where I explain explain that we have two different subtle bodies and you know explaining the whole mechanism of these same things that we are uh, working with in these embodied sitting sessions so um, you know, I, many of you already put your hand up when I asked about that warmth. And that warmth that comes up is the f sensation of the meridian body, body of meridians. So just to uh, bring you up to date, if you haven't read my uh, articles recently or if you haven't heard me speak about this, on recent retreats, we have two different subtle bodies. When I say subtle body, it means something energetic, which is non-physical. So, uh, and the reason why I talk about these two subtle bodies, it is because uh, um, I've made some discoveries in my practice recently that. Uh, um, how do you say, is it debunks, debunk, uh, debunks uh, what is commonly said in yoga books, even in books of traditional Chinese medicine, books of meditation. So we have two different types of subtle bodies. You could say that we have two different types of minds. They are related but yet they are two clearly different uh, clearly different things one of them is made of nadis and chakras or channels and centers and <clears throat> those of you who are familiar with amrita mandala a method and our teachings and the 13 bumis which is what we use as a path map uh, when we talk about channels and centers, nadis and chakras, that's the bumi terrain. So when we talk about six bumi centers, six uh, bumi, um, how do you say, vibratory fields, they are in the body, the six, and then the aura, we have seven, eight, nine, ten, that connect with the Bumi pillars. So that's one type of subtle body. Then we have second type, which is the body of meridians or field of meridians. And you know, the word meridian might be familiar to some of you through, you know, if you have, I'm sure everybody knows about acupuncture that comes from traditional Chinese medicine where you put physical needles into these uh, non-physical channels in the body to heal uh, uh, organs, for example. So meridian is a... I don't actually know where the word, how the word meridian got chosen as a translation. I don't, I don't remember what the Chinese word is, but, but, you know, I guess it only means channel. It is... the word meridian is used in geography also so you know it means like a line or a channel but you know traditional Chinese medicine gives one type of explanation of meridians and then in 
Um, I've studied traditional Chinese medicine through shiatsu massage, which is a Japanese acupuncture massage, style of massage. And then they have a different, a bit, little bit different take on meridian system in um, Chinese internal martial arts, internal martial arts. Um, anyway, you know, the traditional sources, Chinese sources about meridian say that there is like a uh, 15 or 22 or like a small number of meridians, uh, definite channels uh, in the body space. But in my experience, uh, the meridian system, that's, that's like a simplified, oversimplified version of the meridian system. Just like in yoga, you know, when you read yoga books, uh, what they usually mention is just three, three nadis, three channels. The one in the center of the spine and then the left and right channels uh, next to the central channel. So that's also an oversimplified uh, version of channels. Um, and there are uh, yogic texts, yogic sources that speak of uh, the nadi system, larger nadi system, but um, you know the way how we use nadis in Amrita Mandala in Rainbow Body Yoga mostly is that we use uh, the whole auric field that is made of I don't know half a million nadis channels. So we use all of them, not only the three in the spine and next to the spine. So similarly, in traditional Chinese sources, you know, they speak of 14 and 24, uh, if I remember correctly, those kind of numbers of meridians. But the meridian system, it's actually like a field. Uh, like you can think of a, like a farming field or a field of grass. And it has a, like a, a mat of grass growing there that is about this thick, right? It's it's very similar. It's like a, in my experience, the meridian system is like a like a mat, like a carpet, consisting of hundreds, if not few thousand channels, and um, penetrating, covering the whole physical body. So the meridian system doesn't expand. It can be made to expand because it is elastic, but in its um, unmanipulated form, uh, it penetrates the whole physical organism, meaning that it penetrates the skin, the muscles, the organs, uh, anything physical, bones, bone marrow, uh, and it also radiates a little bit uh, outside the skin. So it's that kind of uh, field of uh, field of vibration. So when you just sit and focus on physicality, the warmth that comes up, it's the meridian field starting to light up and starting to generate heat because our mind, the attention of the mind and the, uh, the meridian field, when the attention of the mind goes into the body, it automatically begins to reveal or activate the meridian system. And because of the meeting of the two, attention or awareness of the mind with the body, uh, with the meridian field, some heat is generated. That's where the heat comes from. If you have ever sat uh, Zen retreats, this is a very familiar experience. Uh, you know, I used to do a lot of them back in my Zen days, and this heat would be there most of the time which was very handy also because 
you know, in in Japan where I trained, I also trained in in Scandinavia, but but in Japan there's no heating in the winter in the monastery. So all all heating you had was the heat heat that you generated with your body. So you kind of had to learn it quickly. Otherwise, you know, not that comfortable sitting freezing. Um, but yeah, this is the the warmth is, is the meridian system getting active. The energy there becoming uh, activated, uh, generated. Why is this important? It's because um, this is something that uh, you know we are working with uh, in our sangha because we have about a dozen students who have finished their uh, nadi chakra purification have established wisdom as basis and yet you know there is this meridian system that needs to be activated and purified to reveal the light body the so-called light body rainbow body immortality so you know in our sangha in our method we have focused for many years about eight years now on wisdom wisdom and compassion uh, mostly so we have done the work and we have journeyed through the bumi system uh, and now we are at a point where you know we have a dozen students who have done that so the next uh, next um, necessary thing to cover necessary step or stage to cover is to uh, work with the meridian system to you know there might be trauma traumas i know for a fact that you know, <laughs> you know myself also. You know, I've been focused on on emptiness practice, so I haven't really worked on the meridians much at all within the last decade. So you know, I've been working with, with my trauma. Students in the sun are, are working with theirs, which comes through the meridian system. So what is really interesting is that what Paul really points out the necessity to understand that there is not only one subtle body this is a big big uh, issue and actually a problem in meditative methods because it is not understood that there are two two types of subtle bodies that are different and they work with different types of issues so yes I can say from my own experience that through my years of working with uh, Mahayana Buddhist principles, namely wisdom, emptiness and compassion, bodhicitta, there was some effect on my meridian system, meaning that my traumatic uh, traumas were addressed a little bit, but not that much. Even and I know this to be true for my students as well. So even when working through the Bumis, you know, having those awakening experiences, Bumi events, stabilizations, Bumi perfections, uh, my trauma traumas um, were mostly untouched, went mostly untouched, undealt with. Um, so, um, there is really quite a bit of misunderstandings and mix-ups when it comes to, uh, comes to with this point, because then on the other hand, I know that, you know, from my background in Zen Buddhism, having practiced in in uh, sanghas, you know, having different groups, and then having met so many practitioners, that you know they sit a lot in Zen Buddhism, a lot of embodied sitting, a lot of work on the meridians. 
and you know I've seen in so many uh, so many instances that people who do a lot of embodied sitting, zazen, zen meditation, or perhaps like qigong or tai chi, like internal martial arts, that they might have like a really beautiful skin, really beautiful radiance to their uh, radiance physically. And yet they can be zero bumi. Aha. They can be zero bumi. You know, people might have practiced a Zen practice for a decade, two decades, even three decades. I'm talking about decades here, not hours, not weeks, but decades. So I've seen it many times that uh, practitioners of Zen, for example, or in any style where they do embodied practice, embodied sitting, uh, that they might have this their meridian system might be in fantastic shape but when it comes to wisdom emptiness when it comes to non-dual realization seeing the nature of mind even after many years of practice they might still be almost total total beginners This problem is there because it is not understood that there are two different subtle bodies, not only one. You cannot, you know, if you say that, well, to attain awakening, to attain enlightenment, you just sit. You just sit physically, like a Buddha. And then that makes you awakened or enlightened. Probably won't happen. Because you're working with a different subtle body than you're supposed to if you want to generate uh, wisdom emptiness, meaning awakening, enlightenment. Do you understand? So, um, sometimes it is even said in internal martial arts or in Qigong. Qigong is like Chinese version of yoga, physical yoga. So it is said sometimes in Qigong, in Tai Chi, that you know you just do those movements and you keep doing them and within some time frame you become enlightened. No, because again you're working with embodiment, you're working with the physical body and it's a different different energy body, different subtle body. You're kind of barking at the wrong tree. And that, that very instruction, it misleads people. That's the awful thing. It misled me totally. You know, I was... When I came to Zen Buddhism, I was... All I needed was to... You know, I felt the burning need to have an awakening because my life was awful. I felt awful all the time. So, okay, you just sit and you count breaths. And that's what I did for four years. I did that four years, day and night. Literally, day and night. And then it didn't help me. My meridian system got better. You know, my skin became a little radiant. But I st still had the same self-paced habits, formations. What, I, what I'm doing with this is that it kept, um, um, you know, the self-based reactions kept coming. And this is where the uh, me, self, I, mind sits behind the eyes. So I still had that problem. So I also suffer of this, this misunderstanding or lack of understanding of two different subtle bodies. Okay, so I think that's enough for an intro introduction. I hope it explains a little bit what we are working with here. Let's take 10 minute break. 10 minutes until quarter past and then we'll continue.
Okay.